I feel like as an adult, there are so many things that I see that I'm like, oh, that's what that Simpsons episode was about. And it feels like when Homer was a boxer, he has like some of this Jake LaMotta, like absorbing punishment in him. <laughs> Hi, I'm Josh Gondelman. I'm a comedian and a writer and co-executive producer on Jesus and Marrow and Showtime. I'm the host of the podcast, Make My Day, and I'm here on Take Line to talk about the movie Raging Ball. It's a 1980 film directed by Martin Scorsese starring Robert De Niro as Jake LaMotta, the Raging Bull, a boxer, and it details his rise to a middleweight champion and then his fall. It also is increasingly violent as the film progresses, including the boxing scenes get more and more violent. The film ends with Jake LaMotta imprisoned and gets out of prison, pursuing a career in nightclub entertainment, proving that the heart of this movie is to illustrate that stand-up comedy is the last refuge in popular culture for the uncancelable. And I say that as a stand-up comedian. <laughs> the violence in this movie is like really chilling. Even the boxing starts off, it's like very well choreographed, but it's not like when people call boxing like the sweet science and talk about the artistry, it's like not really present in this movie in the way it is even in some other boxing movies. Like Creed, you're like, oh, I see the kind of beauty and geometry of the sport. But in Raging Bull, it is like so visceral and so brutal and, and like increasingly bloody as the movie continues, right? You see just like the titular rage <laughs> of Jake LaMotta coming out in the ring and like really pulverizing his opponents. And then there's a scene where he punches his wife in the face, which is like so frightening and dark. You don't ever have any disrespect for me. You hear what I said? You know, there are more gory movies for sure, but this movie is so tense because the violence is so explosive and feels so realistic and personal. It's not like John Wick mowing down a bunch of goons with like, you know, irregular fitting Eastern European accents. This is like a guy with menace in his eyes, beating men to a pulp and, and punching women in the face. It's ghastly. This isn't a story of what fame and success and this career do to a person. And it's not a story of like growing apart from people exclusively. It's it's a story of like this guy started off like this and was able to have a whole life of this until he was no longer profitable for other people, right? Even in that scene, he's yelling out the window. He's saying like, you think I'm an animal? I'm not an animal. I'll... And then he says, I'll kill your dog. Like he's a bad dude. You're gonna find your dog dead in the hallway tomorrow, y'all. Yeah. This man is great at one thing and was such a disaster and an abuser at all these other things. And 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 the, the greatness at boxing excused the other things. But like, certainly the lens of the camera is not like, but he's a pretty cool guy, right? Like he is a sad, cruel, violent man. And and I, I thought like watching the movie and I was just like, this is so bleak. It, so much bleaker than I remembered. Cause I think when you're a kid, you don't always like when you, especially seeing kind of those like bombastic acting moments out of context. Come on, shut up, shut up, mind your fucking business and shut up. It can feel like it's not that far from like Adam Sandler as Happy Gilmore flying off the handle. You know what I mean? That's your whole are you too good for your home? When you see it out of context, and then when you see it in the context of the film, you're like, oh, this is horrifying. So it seems like the one thing he won't do is throw a fight. Like, he says that from the beginning. He doesn't want to work with the mob. There's no way I'm going down. I don't go down for nobody. He wants to be champion. He wants a title shot so badly. And he does everything he can think of to get this title shot. He cuts weight to fight Gennaro, beats him up, still not getting the shot. And he eventually submits, right? It seems like that finally he goes, okay. And he agrees to do it. Everybody knows it's going to happen, right? The action on the fight just swings wildly the days before. He loses the fight, hard cut to him crying. During the fight, this is where things kind of went askew for Jake LaMotta. He didn't act like he was losing or couldn't have won at any point if he wanted. He could have maybe faked at throwing some more punches. I think that would have been effective, right? Tried to look like he was going on the offensive. Definitely could have hit the mat. I think that would have really helped. But to throw a fight and lose on points while standing like a literal punching bag and letting the other guy just pummel your face, this that's bad form. Similarly, don't go the way Bruce Willis did in Pulp Fiction at, when you're supposed to throw the fight and punch the other guy so hard he dies. That's also the opposite of successfully throwing a fight. You know the fighter? 
Let me give you that idea. And and so that to him, he was humiliated. And he's not humiliated that he lost. He's humiliated that he submitted, but he still wouldn't go down, meaning he lost two years of his career, the purse from the fight, and like couldn't be a champion for another two years. And even in his last fight that's shown, right, against Sugar Ray Robinson, where he's kind of Lamada's kind of past his prime, he said he's very proud that he never goes down, even though his face is swollen shut and he's really punch drunk. He never got me down, right? Because that's like all he has is not falling down. I feel like as an adult, there are so many things that I see that I'm like, oh, that's what that Simpsons episode was about. And it feels like when Homer was a boxer, he has like some of this Jake LaMotta, like absorbing punishment in him. (laughs) I do think his explicit disregard for these age differences is to show that he is a man who like wants what he wants, regardless of what is moral and what is okay for other people, right? What is harmful to other people. I think it's like showing him as grotesque. But I also think like when he meets his his second wife, right, Vicky, and Joey, his brother is like, she's 15 years old, man, like stay away. It is also explicit that Joey has taken her out on dates as well. You fuck my wife. What? You fuck my wife. So it's like, this guy is gross, but it's also like he comes from this world where men are permitted and encouraged to be gross, like alternatingly encouraged and, and reined in based on like what seems appropriate in the moment to to these guys, right? So it's like, yeah, this guy is, he's a, a bad person, but like, like he's not a uniquely bad person. He's just one of the bad people or one of the people who are bad. Their relationship between Jake and Joey, it feels like they are always family and they're always working together like it it just feels like joey is always trying to care for him as a boxer and as a trainer and jake is always responding to him as a brother and as a fighter there's like no boundary between their like professional and personal so like when things go wrong in one arena it comes out in another arena as well you're killing yourself the way you eat Y'all fat fuck, look at you. The scene immediately after his wife brings in the steak and he's, you know, he's very abusive and domineering towards her, which is very dark. But then he and Joe Pesci, I remember this in isolation from being like 16, 17. He's saying, punch me in the face. You know, wrap up your hand, punch me in the face, punch me harder. And you see from the very beginning, like he's he's stubborn and just physically he has a, an indomitable skull. Come on, harder, harder. But his own, his brother is powerless to physically hurt him. And I think like it can very effectively emotionally hurt him, it turns out. So at the end of the film Raging Bull, the character Jake LaMotta is out of boxing and he's performing stand-up comedy in first his own nightclub and then a much smaller, less glitzy nightclub in New York City. I said to the owner of Jay, I said, listen, where's the toilet? He said, you're in. I think it's so interesting to show that he is so violently charismatic. Like he has this dark charisma throughout the whole movie that women are drawn to him. Men kind of want his respect and he's an incredible fighter. But when he's doing stand-up, he's like pretty meek. Even when he's talking about the same subjects, he's like not poised or in control. And I think it really shows that this character is like a man who thrives in one dimension, which is like brutish violence. And he does not thrive as a stand-up comedian. His his writing is a little weak and I would say unlikable and his stage persona is kind of limp. The other friend says, hey, that sounds great. How does your wife get home? <laughs> I think it is such a choice to have his onstage charisma, especially until you see him putting on the suit at the very end. Uh, But like when he's working in nightclubs, people only laugh at like every third joke and he's stumbling through things. Uh, just want to see what the... Open a microphone on a sexy girl. Sounds like. And like the same things that he did as a powerful, beloved boxer, right? Belittling people, uh, uh, hurting his wife. The same thing that people acted like were appealing and charming and masculine are now like he really seems, again, pathetic talking about them on stage. So the ultimate humiliation for a rich, famous person is to do stand up comedy, the thing to which I have devoted my life. <laughs> Not to be controversial, Raging Bull, starring Robert De Niro, directed by Martin Scorsese, is a very good movie. It is one of those movies that, like, is in the, like, the dude pantheon of great movies. Not that only dudes like them, but, like, if there's a guy that only likes quote-unquote guy movies, this is up there. A- and I think deservedly so, but it is, it is, like, a hard watch. And I think it's an especially hard watch if you are a person who has a history of being a survivor or a witness to domestic abuse, right? 
And I don't think that means it is a movie without merit, certainly. But like the dude movie that I feel the least controversial saying like, I love this movie. And I think if people watched it, maybe they'd enjoy it is like The Big Lebowski. Because while there is violence, there it, there's so much less that is like gripping in a realistic, traumatic way. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. But this movie, I think, is, like, really great. But if someone is like, I couldn't get through it because the brutality is so, like, focused and painful, I would be like, yes, I understand that as well. <laughs>